trickery? It's by tricking someone. But I didn't expect to be fooled like that during my first class. Lesson number one, be watchful and never let your guard down. Having experienced firsthand the trickery of Malicia, Josette is ready to go deeper into the fundamentals. She has heard about a mystery who uses this Afro-Brazilian martial art for social action and asks Mr. Acordeon to bring her to one of Salvador da Bahia's favelas, or shanty towns, to meet him. Social worker and capoeira mystery Boa Gente combines his skills to teach disadvantaged youths of this area. Mr. Acordeon wants Josette to witness the physical discipline, the enthusiasm of the musicians, the singing of the capoeiristas, all of which help give confidence and a sense of community to their Afro-Brazilian heritage. <laughs> Although I don't feel in danger here, Mestre Boagente tells me that if I were alone, within 15 minutes I would be robbed or worse. Last year, Mestre Accordion was held up at gunpoint in this neighborhood. His car was stolen and found the next day with a dead body in the trunk. Olha o muro que eles fizeram para separar a gente. Olha o muro. you look. As we walk, I'm shaken to see the barbed wire that lines up the top of the wall on the street. Mestre Boagente explains that the wall is there to keep the residents of the favela out of the neighboring wealthy area. A stark reminder of the barriers that continue to divide Brazilian society to this day. Mestre Boagente's students are already doing an elaborate form of jinga. Seeing these movements set to music, I can understand why some people mistake capoeira for a dance and not a martial art. Great. Two top masters playing together in a roda. It's going to be interesting to see if ego will get in the way. First they bow, then they trade taunts by singing alternating verses. And what begins with a friendly handshake quickly turns into a back kick. Boagente and Accordion both project a friendly teasing manner. Their control kicks sweet flows as to say, hmm, I could have got you there. They never break eye contact, even when they are upside down. Cordeon walks away. Then he comes back in with an unexpected back kick. Accordion even uses trickery on his friends, reminding me that the game is never over until you're out of the circle. Trickery or treachery in Capoeira, also known as Malicia, 
began in the resistance of African slaves. The slaves would purposely create accidents that damage property or sabotage the efforts of their owners, then behave as if they had done nothing. This strategy allowed them to hold on to their sense of self while appearing to cooperate with their masters. The players often pretend to be hurt or drunk or tired. They may leave the fight and then return abruptly. This is Malicia. Lesson number two. The context dictates the meaning of fair play. Some scholars have written about a link between capoeira and runaway slaves for whom escape would have been the ultimate goal. In a jungle outside of Salvador, Josette gets a chance to investigate this theory with Mestre Acordeon, who has done extensive research on this subject. Do you think that part of the forest and part of this tropical environment gave part of what capoeira is? There are several theories about the history of capoeira. So some people think that they were created in the jungle. So some people think that's a urban art form. I myself, I find it very difficult to believe that runaway slaves were able to do capoeira in a jungle. In a jungle you use a spear, you use arrows, you use rocks, you that. So for me capoeira is an urban art form, but they were use a self-defense and they urban in some ways. And that's my view, perhaps I'm wrong, but... What do you uh, think they could be, if they had to use it in the jungle as they were running away and things like that, what would they have been doing? Not so much the movements in itself, but the strategy of the capoeira. Oh, they, to run, they what hide? To do, they fake, they hide, they move, right. the capacity to be elusive. Right. Right. So I don't know that some stories say that some capoeiristas, they were able to disappear. And it looks like the ninja to me. Well, the terminology of capoeira is often colorful and used to fool unwary adversaries. For example, a so-called blessing is in fact a kick in the gut. And then that uh, people would like that give you a blessing here, and the things go. The best will go, and uh, I don't know if they thought about, but that worked. It worked. And also the setup kick, because everything yeah. up here is like a setup kick. Yeah. You have one that you call martelo. Martelo means hammer. Think about Wait, the hammer. It's just a. Yeah. So I'm going to show you very basic things. Okay. So you do swing kicks, circular kicks, straight kicks. In the past, the takedowns are very important, even today, but the vocabulary developed. And I wonder that you squat now. Squat. Good afternoon, Jose. How are you? Okay. Then yeah. you do a kick over me. Then I go, I'm fine, thanks. So the movement is like this dialogue. Lesson number three, Capoeira is a playful dialogue as well as a fight. Physical trickery is not the only form of deception in Capoeira. In the past, songs were used to warn that one of the players had a concealed knife or that the police were approaching. The songs sung at a roda still offer commentaries on the action. Lyrics tease, taunt, and push the players on to greater feats. Central to the songs, the berimbau, which Mestre Bimba called the soul of capoeira. With only a single string, the Berimbau produces rich music. In the hands of a mestre, its primitive sound can reach inside your soul. Accordion as a gift for Mestre Olavo, one of Salvador's greatest instrument makers. A berimbau that he had hand painted by a famous San Francisco artist.
The bedding bao is a bow. Because it has to be springy, it is often made of biriba or mukuje wood. These days, a steel string from an old tire is used to bend the bow, which is about one and a half meters long. About 30 centimeters from the lower end, the taut cord attaches a gourd resonator, a kabaka, to the bow. Striking the string below the kabaka with a flexible bamboo stick produces the bedding bow's distinctive sound. dictates he must leave Salvador. He has taken me all around the circle, but I have yet to go inside. Almost by fate, Josette runs into the person she is hoping to meet, Mestre Jogo de Dentro, who drives by with her friend Colette. Jogo is Colette's Mestre. When he puts his arms around me, I feel enveloped by his energy. I've heard so much about this man, and I'm looking forward to studying with him. Jorge Edo Santos, Mestre Jogo de Dentro, started playing capoeira at the age of 10 on the streets of Salvador. At 15, he joined the academy of famed capoeira angola, Mestre Joao Pequeño. Now Jogo runs his own schools in Salvador and Sao Paulo, dedicated to preserving Capoeira Angola in its original form. that this will be the most difficult and demanding phase of my journey. She's on her own, facing a new challenge, measuring up within a group of skilled capoeiristas. She arrives at Mestre Jogo da Dentro's academy in Salvador da Bahia. The next two hours will be grueling. Jogo is doing everything to put me at ease. He asked me if I'm ready for this. I think I am. I'm a little daunted looking around. The temperature is 40 plus and we haven't even started yet. All around me the other students are doing incredible things. They look like circus performers. I'm just trying to stretch out the kinks that come with age. The 
class starts again with the jinga, but this time everything is slow down and twisting. Zogo keeps going for over two hours, and he doesn't just teach from the head of the class, he does everything we do. All capoeira training takes incredible acrobatic skills. But in capoeira Angola, you also have to perform the moves in a kind of slow motion that stresses and strains every muscle. Keeping your balance and moving gracefully become far more difficult. Beautiful to see him just moving like a little ball, and it's all almost in slow motion. It's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> After class, I'm strangely energized. I head into the night forgetting how tired I am. I get caught up in the festival that's going on. I'm on my way to meet Mr. Jogori Dentro at the church, the Iglesia do Carmo. I ask Mr. Jogo why this particular church is important to him. He tells me that his great-grandfather was a slave. And according to family histories, slaves were held and sold in this church. But Jogo believes that this part of Brazilian history has been disregarded since the start of the Republic. The slave trade dates around 1500 and lasted almost 400 years. During that time, Millions of free Africans were enslaved and shipped to Brazil, then a Portuguese colony, to work the vast sugar, tobacco and coffee plantations. It is estimated that more than three and a half million slaves landed in the port city of Salvador alone. Mestre Jugo explains, this was the courtyard where slaves were made to parade in front of plantation owners and then auction off. As they descend into the bowels of the catacombs, Mr. Jogo tells Josette that every time he comes here, he experiences a spiritual reawakening. He tells me he feels the energy coming from these walls, that down here is where slaves were chained, tortured, given little or no food, no sunshine, no light. He says he feels the vibration from all their suffering. For Mr. Jogo, learning capoeira is a way of keeping alive the memory of those tortured souls and transforming the spiritual energy he finds here into something positive. Lesson number four. A capoeira master's art reaches beyond the physical training. Ginga. A U negativa. Bora, A U. Negativa. It's back to Jogo's class for more exercises. I'm beginning to feel some of the 30 years I have on this young woman I'm training with and pray for my knees not to give out on me. This is the only martial art where I have to become a skilled musician as well as running house of fight. 
Jogo is passionate about ending every class with a musical session. In Capoeira, learning to play a range of instruments and sing the accompanying songs is as important as learning the physical moves. The berimbau is the key instrument, but there is also the atabaki, a conga-like drum, the pandeiro, a large tambourine, and the agogo, which consists of two small bells tied together. Shortly after Mestre Bimba helped legalize Capoeira in 1937, another great Brazilian master emerged from the shadows. Mestre Pastinha turned his back on Mestre Bimba's structured sequences, feeling that they took the soul out of the art. Mestre Pastinha championed the return to Capoeira's original form, now known as Capoeira Angola. Mestre Pastinha developed an outstanding student, João Pequeno. As a living link between Capoeira's present and past, this is the man I want to meet. According to Jogo, the 84-year-old João Pequeno lives in poverty despite being the Capoeira Mestre in the eyes of Angola students worldwide. classes when he's in Salvador. There are special games to play within a roda, such as this money game. The object is for a player to pick up a handkerchief of money from the floor using his teeth. The game involves a key principle of Angola, to control the action in a tight space. When Hugo is asked to play against his 84-year-old mestre, he's reluctant and tries to get out of it because he never wins. But finally, he agrees. The game begins, and it's already over. We don't even get to see how good he is. So I ask, please do it again. They keep their eyes on the prize the whole time. Jogo moves first, using his bulk. Second move, here comes Pequeno. He kicks, forcing Jogo back. Jogo tries a third move. Pequeno puts himself between Jogo and the money. He turns and picks up the handkerchief. We have a winner! When the winner tricks his opponent, he does it without destroying the spirit of the game. The money game is pure strategy, and it may be why only old wily Capoeira Angola mestres seem to play it. Lesson number five. You don't always play capoeira to win. As in life, sometimes the goal is just survival. Hola, mestre. Mestre pequeno, Jovete. Mestre pequeno. Mestre pequeno. Mestre pequeno. Encantado. Mestre pequeno. Mestre pequeno still travels two hours every day to teach at an abandoned fort. Though technically he is a squatter, this is the building where he's taught capoeira since before Jogo started as his student. Though he's considered a national treasure, the school where he's taught for decades could be reclaimed by the city at any moment. Despite these difficult conditions, Mestre Pequeno accepts his situation with humility. Throughout my visit, he is unfailingly cheerful. Today is a big occasion. It's Mestre Pequeno's birthday. I was told a white dress shirt should greatly please him. And I cannot wait to be there tonight for his birthday party.
to the academy, I feel the students' love for the old mystery. I'm told that as a gift, Mr. Spigeno students they painted the room where he teaches. But because of lack of money, they had to dilute the paint with water. It's still wet, so anyone who leans against it takes away a green souvenir. None of this dampens the celebration, however, and the singing, dancing, and playing capoeira lasts late into the night. Since the bedding bow is known as the instrument that talks to the spirits, Mr. Piqueno uses it to bestow blessings on all his guests. And I will need his blessing. I have promised myself I will enter the Roda before I leave Salvador. Capoeiristas have honed and tested their skills on the beaches of Salvador da Bahia. As Josette nears the end of her journey, she is more determined than ever to play inside the fighting circle, the Roda. With time running out, she gets in a last training session with her martial arts partner, Colette Vigile. Josette heads to Zogo's class. She has one last thing she wants to do. The sweet sounds of the wedding bow lead Josette to Mestre Olav. I had intended to buy one of Mestre Olavo's wedding bow. So I'm truly touched by the gift and the impromptu lesson I received from the mystery himself. With a bow in hand, I feel one step closer to becoming a real capoeirista. This is a confidence boost before my last class with Mr. Jogo. As a form of malicia and to preserve their African traditions, Slaves developed unique and clandestine forms of religion, like Candomblé and its own pantheon of religious figures, Orishas. Capoeiristas often invoke the protection of Orishas. Today, Candomblé is commemorated by huge statues of Orishas, which rise above the waters of the Tororo Cape in Salvador. My final class falls on Jogo's weekly fast day. Every Friday he fasts and dresses all in white in accordance with his candomblé beliefs. It's unbearably hot. Watching Jogo push himself harder and harder and knowing that he has been fasting all day, I'm amazed by his stamina. I'm feeling the strain myself. I've never felt so overheated. As this class isn't long enough, at the end, Jogo calls for a Rhoda. Jogo is calling.
following the circle to pull in tighter, making it even more difficult to maneuver. As I watch him move, I can see how he got his nickname. He is famous for being able to fight in a small space, a corner, a tabletop, in a doorway. I want to go in, but I don't want to. Maybe I should wait until I'm better prepared. Wait, did he pull a muscle? the other player and leaves the rota. But it's a trick. He's back in with a headbutt. Fine example of Malicia. <laughs> Mestre Jogo reaches out for me. I guess this is my moment. Unless it's just more trickery. No, it's real and here I go. <laughs> Struggle, but I keep on going. Thank God, Mr. Jogo is kind enough to guide me, and that he saves the trickery for more advanced players. I follow his lead, returning to the Jenga. I keep my eyes on him, and do my best to be a part of the conversation. itself as a harmless dance, today capoeira is a joyful and defiant expression of Afro-Brazilian culture. Soon I will leave Salvador, but I will return home with vivid memories of the mysteries. Accordion Strathway, Minel Bimba prayed in his father's accomplishments. Olavo's musicality. Boa Gente's joy and commitment to his community. Pequeno's experience and devotion. And the profound spirituality of Jogo de Dentro. Capoeira is a metaphor for the struggles of life in Brazil. Forged by the terror and oppression of slavery, Capoeira has become a triumphant expression of the people's will to not only survive, but to flourish. My goal as a martial artist is to transcend the daily dimension of life to win what the mysteries win, a touch of invincibility. Thank you.